big news from Signal. It is the most private messaging app uh, in the opinion of many cybersecurity experts. And the CEO has stepped down. Moxie Marlinspike, he is an incredible uh, thought leader. He has done so much for privacy. He's an original cypherpunk and he built Signal and has decided, you know, after a decade of working on this, he's going to take a break. Uh, he wrote this really nice post that kind of illuminates how much work goes into these things, how difficult it is to keep these systems up and running, how much of a toll it takes, saying that, you know, he's going to take a break from this, but uh, he's going to remain on Signal's board. And meanwhile, Brian uh, Brian Acton is going to step up. I, I have some stuff that I want to dive into about Brian Acton, um, but I'm going to throw it to the group to start off with uh, for your thoughts. And then, I'll, then we'll dive into that backstory, which I think is super interesting that many people might not be aware of. But Christy, I'll throw to you to start off with. I think that um, he's got some really good ideas. Um, I think that Signal has been a great asset, especially for, say, journalists who want to do, have some private encrypted uh, conversations. Um, the thing with what I'm interested in is where he's going to go next. He has many, many thoughts that he has come out with about Web3 and the not so much decentralized processes that go on behind the scenes in Web3 that Web3 is being built on. So maybe he'll take more of an active role there. We don't know. He says he's going to be stepping down gradually over the month. And, you know, maybe by the time they find themselves a new CEO, he'll have more definite plans. But I'm really curious to see where that ends up. Jen, I saw in your hand. Jen, how are you? Yeah, in the blog post, he talks about, you know, really like building Signal up from its infant days. You know, he did all the jobs. He sat out in the rain with his laptop, you know, troubleshooting server issues. And it takes a lot from a CEO who has gone through all of that to understand when it's time to let go. I think I said the same thing when Jack Dorsey stepped down. So I think I think this is taking a lot from him. But if we can draw parallels to what happened to Jack Dorsey when he stepped down from, from Twitter, you know, he's really focusing on his passion now and building out these ecosystems around Bitcoin and, and Web3. And so Christy, to your point, I'm really interested to see um, where he goes next. But Naomi, I'll throw it back up to you. Yeah, I think the big takeaway from this article, um, when he's talking about building this up, I mean, he said, um, actually, I want to go back to your, your point, um, Christy, in talking about decentralization of Web3, because I think it ties back to what makes Signal so special, is his Web3 article where he wrote this blog post saying, this is not decentralized, guys, be really aware of what you're actually getting involved with. His big point was people don't want to run their own service. And this is just true. People don't want to run their own service. So what we end up with is this centralization of everyone's calling on the same thing, uh, these same hubs who kind of like control this. They are big focal points of potential failure there or, or censorship or control. Um, and people need to be aware of that. Now, what makes services like Signal so important is you have all these privacy people out there who are like, oh, the only truly private thing is if you run your own server and you have to do this. And most people are going to be like, oh, I'm just going to give up and just kind of use Facebook instead. You know, it's too difficult. And what Signal does is it says, listen, and this is what um, Moxie talks about in his article. He says, listen, the point is that we're going to tend towards centralized infrastructure. The point isn't to try to decentralize the infrastructure, it's to make it secure enough so it doesn't matter if it's centralized. And that's what Signal did. It brought privacy to the masses because it made it easy enough and it took all that data out of the hands of even the people running the servers. It says you won't even get access to this information. So it doesn't matter if it's it, you know somewhat centralized in that regard because these servers, this company doesn't have any access to information. So Signal brought this amazing user experience, brought privacy to the masses. Um, and privacy is really only valuable when it's scalable in this way, because if you're not, if you don't have someone on the other end of your message willing to also be private with you, you know that your message isn't private. If you're sending from ProtonMail, you're sending it to Gmail. Google's reading everything that you said, regardless of you opting into ProtonMail. It's about you know bringing this to the masses. But what I wanted to dive into with Brian Acton, so he's the one who is now taking over as interim CEO. Uh, so WhatsApp was actually co-founded by Brian Acton. A lot of people probably aren't aware of that history. Um, he was very well known at the time for being super privacy focused while he was running it. So for example, WhatsApp famously didn't keep logs of uh, user conversation. Um, and then they turned on encryption for a billion users. They brought 
encryption to the mainstream. Like WhatsApp did an incredible job. Now in 2014, WhatsApp was sold to Facebook and it was the largest ac acquisition uh, by Facebook at that time. Brian Acton immediately became really unhappy with the direction the app was moving in. So all the people out there who were like, oh, WhatsApp's really encrypted. Well, the guy who founded it, it was like, actually, this is not what I want uh, in an app. I'm really unhappy with this. He was so unhappy that in 2017, he had all these uh, vested, uh, unvested options on the table, $850 million worth that were about to come to fruition in like a month. He was so unhappy, he left $850 million on the table because he just wanted to leave. Right? Wow. This is how like this is how unhappy he was with the direction. So what he did was he took $50 million of the money he had. He gave it straight to the private messaging competitor Signal, which Moxie had established with the, the Signal Foundation. And the two of them set up this Signal Foundation. And then they've just been focused on actually building out private messaging. And I love this story because it's just like a big you know, middle finger up to, to Facebook and companies that take private things and move it in a direction that actually compromises user data. Like they were so principled in this. And I just, I just really love this story. So I wanted to mention it. And this is the man who will be taking over from Moxie. So although I'm super sad to see Moxie leave Signal, he will still be on the board. Uh, and Moxie has just done such amazing stuff uh, for privacy for all of us. So thank you for your service, sir. And uh, Brian Acton, I think is going to do a tremendous job as well. And we'll see who takes over as the actual CEO once they find a replacement. But uh, I will throw it to you, Zach, for some final thoughts. Yeah, that Moxie guy, he, I don't know, he's an interesting <laughs> character. He was involved with the mobile coin project. He has mm -hmm. various reservations mm -hmm. about crypto and Web3. He may have been the CTO of the mobile coin project, according to, according to some uh, early documentation out of that team. So he remains an enigmatic character within the crypto space. And I'm with Christy. I'm curious to see where he goes next.